Hi, I'm Alois Pungida and you're listening to the ZFM Sport Podcast. Z. The, the, the hottest station in the nation. Z. 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 FM Stereo. ZFM Stereo. It's Lionel Messi. He scored. The goal the world wanted. It's time for the biggest sports stories. It's Neymar trying to feed it through. It's a stretch and it's in. Biggest interviews. It's more difficult. Obviously, it's more difficult. And all the analysis right here. If they play poorly, they come back, they've got all the excuses. You can't have it both ways. Every weekday, it's my sport, it's your sport. It's CFM Sport. Let's join the team for the biggest show in the world of sport on CFM Stereo. My station, your station. Monday evening and welcome to it everybody good evening to you welcome to ZFM Sport the nation's leading sports show on the nation's leading uh, uh, sports station Uh, should I say radio station (laughs) have we we taken over the whole station sports station we have we (laughs) might as well (laughs) we we, we might as well you know just do this whole thing 24 hours there we go but we are here we are here of course the full team is in the studio Barry Manandi Chris Gray Sean Tafirinika Alois Mungira and myself Mike Madoda will help you relive the drama, the thrills, the spills, the goals, the hits, the misses, as well as all the action that made it such an exciting weekend in the world of sport. Plenty to look forward to tonight. Indeed, it may be off-season in the Castle Lager Premier Soccer League, but FC Platinum's Continental Campaign is well and truly on. This weekend, the champions welcome Guinea champions Horoya AC. In Melbourne, the Australian Open went according to the form book as Novak, Nole, Djokovic and Naomi Osaka uh, picked up where they left off last year to bag the first Grand Slam of the year. And in the beautiful game, we will camp out in England where Spurs manager Maurizio Pochettino Poch has re- re- reignited a debate around what's more valuable, winning a domestic trophy or qualifying for the Champions League. You can already weigh in on that debate on 0731 0-7-3-1-1-6-8-0-4-5. And once you have, don't forget to send your hashtag ProFeeds Trivia if you want to be our daily winner. The Warriors, the Chevrons, the Cheetahs, the Mighty Warriors, and the Sables. From the pool to the track to the field, we are Team Zimbabwe. The Home Front. Local sports news and analysis. Just a reminder of our WhatsApp our platform again: zero seven three one one six eight zero four five. That's zero seven three one one six eight zero four five. Twitter and Facebook. Follow and interact with at ZFM Sport. We start on the home front. Horoya SC of Guinea have declared that they are serious about turning around their fortunes in the CAF Champions League competition after arriving a full week before their Group B clash against local champions AFC Platinum. The 16-time Guinean champions who are still smarting from a three-nil drubbing by Orlando. Pirates of South Africa, which condemned them to the bottom of the group, who will clash with the Platinum Miners at Barberfields on Saturday. They left their base last Friday and touched down in Zimbabwe in the early hours of Saturday with 22 players after a long flight that took them uh, via Cote d'Ivoire, Addis Ababa and South Africa. Sure. They had their first training session yesterday at the National Sports Stadium's B Arena under the watchful eye of their veteran French coach Patrice Nevu. Now, Horoya guys, I know a lot of people have talked them up as possibly, or should I say talked them down, as possibly the weakest team in the group. Is that a true assertion, Alois, from your observation of the teams having having watched the teams play so far in just the two match days that we've witnessed, namely FC Platinum taking on Orlando Pirates, FC Platinum versus Esperance, and then Horoya taking on Esperance and taking on Orlando Pirates? Uh, to say the weakest team in the group, uh, I wouldn't want to say that, but I want to say that maybe they are the num- candidate that we can... Uh, compete with as FC Platinum. I'm saying we because I am for FC Platinum. The other two, I might think that they are a notch ahead of us. We can compete and try to play against them, but they are teams that we, when they beat us, we can go home and say, yeah, we've been beaten by a team that is, can beat us. But Oroya is, is, is the team that we can also say, you know what, this one, 
we can also beat. So mm. we are on par. We can't say we are better than them. I would say yes, but also not to underestimate them. This mm. team has also yeah. made the quarterfinals before, and mm-hmm. this is FC Platinum's first time in the group stages even. So I think even that poses a different mental challenge itself to say these guys are quarterfinalists. FC Platinum is almost still trying to find their feet. I'm sure they found their feet now in the competition, but it's just it would be a bad idea to underestimate them and say, you know what, these guys we can take very easily. As uh, Chris points out, of course, Oroya were quarterfinalists in the last edition of the tournament, but they've had a b- bit of a poor start in this year's uh, group stage campaign. Uh, although they did uh, uh, flatter to deceive, as it were, in the first uh, match of the group, where uh, for a long time they led Esperance uh, in, in their home encounter, uh, only for Esperance to equalise right at the death in the 89th minute of that match. So uh, three points became one, uh, and uh, they haven't had the opportunity to add to that one, and they sit at bottom of the group, especially after they were thumped by Orlando Pirates. When you watch them versus Orlando Pirates, did you see anything, Barry, that could trouble FC Platinum playing at home? And did you see anything from FC Platinum that gave you hope that they may kick on in this particular edition of okay, the Champions League? I, I, think, I think, firstly, the, the, the FC Platinum has no choice but to go out and try and win this match. Now, that's going to be a danger for them because Horoya in the matches that I've seen them play, are, are pretty good in transition. They're, they're very good at knocking the ball around and also very strong on the ball. Those are attributes that are going to test uh, FC Platinum. I think that Orlando Pirates, the scoreline, um, yes, is, is well-deserved, but... Or what Orlando Pirates managed to do was to punish mistakes and punish them brutally. Also, Orlando Pirates became the Orlando Pirates that we knew, the one that we expected to play FC Platinum at Barberfield Stadium, the one that is able to counter-attack at pace, able to get behind defences, able to take their chances through Justin Shonga in the main. And that is the one that showed up. So Horoya then was, was, was put to the sword. FC Platinum will need to mitigate against letting Horoya play. They're going to have to go out and, 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 and attack. Oh, Roy, of course, are missing a couple of players ahead of their trip uh, to Zimbabwe. Uh, the team, of course, uh, lost uh, uh, Kadim Ndiaye uh, from injury as well as Guinean international Samuel Conte. Uh, but, uh, of course, uh, they I mean, uh, they actually lost Dauda Kamara and Jermaine Beth. Uh, but the players that have made a comeback are the Guinean international Samuel Conte as well as goalkeeper Kadim Ndiaye, uh, who is from Senegal. So, uh, two players in, two players missing. And uh, does it work? you always that they're here early uh, because uh, being here early means that they get to acclimatize and one of the the advantages that we have often talked about uh, for AFC Platinum is the pitch the surface at Barberfield Stadium which is very similar uh, to the lush surface that you find at Mandava they found pretty much a similar surface at the National Sports Stadium. So they're going to have a feel for it. They're going to be able to acclimatize to that. To that. They've got several days in the in the country. So in terms of conditioning, these guys, unlike uh, Otto uh, from the Congo, who faded badly in the last 25 minutes of the game, we expect this Guinean crack outfit to be still going uh, in the 90th minute. Yeah, obviously, Mike, uh, when, when, they, when, when they come here, they're coming, they mean business. They know as much as we are saying FC Platinum have to win this one, they also know that this is the one they have to win if they want to proceed to the next round. So that's why they came here, they mean business. And like you said, we always have this disadvantage here in Zimbabwe that, you know, we have got this nice weather, beautiful weather, nice surface and all that. We don't take advantage of that. Whereas when you go to West Africa, there's the heat and it it, 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 defla- it, it deflates our players. But here, savannah climate, everybody wa- loves this <laughs> loves this place. You know, that's the, that's the biggest problem. That's the biggest disadvantage. We never have serious big advantage as far as the surface and weather and uh, all that uh, atmosphere and all that is concerned. We never have that. They actually come here to enjoy. They, they do mean serious business, yeah. Mike. I, I think uh, uh, arriving a full week before means that they know that this is do or die for them. And, and uh, they, they, it, they lose this match. They can pretty much kiss this campaign goodbye. And they realize that. So they've come out. They want to get used to the conditions and be able to compete against FC Platinum, who themselves are not mugs. Yeah, who themselves are not mugs. Now, early on, we caught up with FC Platinum spokesperson Chido Chizonda to find out how preparations are going for the hosting of Horoya SC this weekend in Bulawayo. The preparation started uh, when we returned our last match with Esperance. Everything is in order and the team will be traveling to Bulawa tomorrow morning. I think uh, ultimately for the entire team, it's to get a maximum, it's to get it's to, um, uh, ultimately for the team is to collect maximum points. 
um, as we get closer to the end of the round, it it would be good that uh, we win our home games. But um, according to the entire team, it's just to give it a hundred percent, and uh, hopefully we'll get a positive result. Come. They're hoping for a positive result there, Chris uh, FC Platinum. But, but what what do you think would have been their realistic targets heading into this campaign uh, for FC Platinum? Would they have targeted the experience of playing in the group stages since you did point out at the very start that uh, this is their first time at this stage of the competition? Mm-hmm. Or And uh, would it have been saying, you know what, let's have a feel of the competition this year. We are guaranteed participation next season. And then let's see if we can push on and crack on next time round. I think absolutely this time is to get a feel of exactly what it's like to be in the group stages. I think it's a completely just watching um, the matches and seeing the level of competition that there is previously and now in the group stages, it's completely different and I think for the players themselves mentally, to get mentally fit to get ready to to know what to expect I think this year is really important to prep them for next year. Making it past the group stages would be absolutely great but I think the fact that if they've made it into the group stages for me, absolutely fantastic. But uh, next time out though, I uh, there is the, 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 the cynics who will say, you know what, there's no guarantee that you will make uh, the group stages of the UEFA Champions League because uh, this time, you know what, uh, you you had something of, uh, uh, of, 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 of the Cup Champions League. You <laughs> yes, had something you know. of a favourable draw yeah. uh, in terms of the teams that you actually played uh, in, in order for you to get to the group stages. Uh, that, because next time out, who knows who you could get in the draw. So, you know what, why not just go for it anyway? Yeah, uh, they need to go for it. I agree, but uh, like Chris said, it's their first time experience. But I just hope that they are learning with mm. experience. Sometimes you just go there and say experience, and you come back, you do the same, very same things again. But one thing that I hope that they've realized is that they need a few more players with pedigree, African pedigree. Yeah. They need that. Look at the team that they are playing. They've got African players, for not just from their country. Mm. They've got other African countries. They know their experience. They know that they need... One thing we have talked about is they need an African striker. When I say African, I'm, not, yeah. I'm talking about One a, who a can striker compete that can on compete the continent. on the continent. They, they, they seriously need that. They also need a midfielder that can also do that same job as well, compete in Africa. I hope that they, they are learning because they have a good team. But going forward, I watched when they played Esperance, I was very disappointed with the attacking power. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I think uh, the, the performance versus Esperance was woeful, uh, to say the least. Uh, if you want to join in on the conversation, do so on WhatsApp 731 168 Coming up, we have a local sports news roundup where we touch on rugby and athletics. We'll take a bit of a breather and then we go to our international sports news where the Australian in open, Nole Djokovic as well as Naomi Osaka are in front court. Hello, I'm Madinda Ndobu, the Highlanders coach. You are listening to ZFM Sport. Let's wrap up your local sports news. Uh, rugby, Old Georgian Sports Club began their 2019 Harare Rugby Board Under-21 Championship Group B campaign with a lopsided 118-0 to win over Yada. My goodness. On Saturday at Is this Old the same Rugby. Yada as in uh, 100%. 100%. So I think, rugby team. I think Yada, Yada has, got a, has got the He's sports got club sports mentality club. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, whereby they've got a, a netball team, basketball, rugby, and of course a footy team. Uh, I think Yada okay. could have their own little city. If they uh, so uh, 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 <laughs> but I, I, I believe in in, in 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 organic growth. Yes, you know, don't force certain things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, then, uh, well, 118 to, to <laughs> nil <laughs> sort of says, yeah, you're kind of forcing it. Here, fly off. Jerry Jaravaza was clinical with his boot as he managed to land all his 17 kicks and the huge win over the groom uh, for the Groombridge based side. The other big winners in the Group B while this past weekend were Southern City, who beat Mbare 52-5 uh, to get their campaign off to a good start. To OH also started the season with a win after getting the better of Alex Sports Club in a match that finished 33-10. In Athletics News, National Athletics Association of Zimbabwe, NAAZ Director for Coaching, Talent Identification and Development, Lissimati Pakamile, has expressed disappointment after most athletes missed the National Track and Field Championships at White City Stadium in Wulai on Saturday. Uh, the National Coaching Department had hoped to identify athletes for upcoming major competitions. The Athletics Motherboard body 
are seeking to field teams at the Confederation of African Athletics Under-18 and Under-20 Championships in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire in April. They also have the World Championships to be staged in Doha, Qatar between September and October. Are you facing financial challenges? Are you struggling to meet basic human needs? Do you have capital but don't know how to start a business? Do you have a business that isn't growing? All these problems are caused by poverty mindset and lack of financial intelligence. Whichever challenge you are facing right now, there's a one-stop shop for financial success. Introducing the Empowerment School of Wealth. Ten years of turning ordinary people into an extraordinary success. Established in 2009 by Dr. Nick Ohizu, this school will teach you how to start your business, how to correct your financial mistakes, how to raise capital, how to come out of debt, how to become a financial success, and so much more. Only four months of study to change your life forever. Join the champions of 2019 and give yourself a financial head start. School starts 9th of February. Classes run Fridays 5.30pm to 7pm and Saturdays 2pm to 4pm. For registration, call 0735-532-194. Register now. Here we go again. Enjoy World Class Radio Online. ZFM Stereo is available on TuneIn. Search for ZFM Stereo and you got it. From the front of the grid to the back of the net, it's ZFM Sport. International Sports News Roundup, where the world comes out to play. Novak Djokovic says he's motivated by having a shot at Swiss great Roger Federer's all-time men's record of 20 Grand Slam victories. The 31-year-old Serb, the world number one thrash great rival Rafa Nadal 6-3, 6-2, 6-3 to claim his 15th major in Sunday's Australian Open final. It was his third slam in a row, having won Wimbledon and the US Open in 2018. Top seed Djokovic's record seventh men's singles victory in Melbourne moved him outright third ahead of American Pete Sampras in the all-time list, closing in on Federer as well as Rafa Nadal, who's got 17 Grand Slams. Let's hear from the 2019 Australian Open men's singles champion. Playing Grand Slams and, and biggest ATP events is uh, is my utmost priority in this season and and the seasons to come. Uh, how many seasons are to come? I, I don't know, um, and I'm not trying to think too much advance, but I do want to definitely focus myself on uh, continuing to improve my game and maintaining the overall well-being that I have mental, physical, emotional so I would be able to um, compete at such a high level for, for the years to come and have a shot that eventually uh, you know, uh, getting closer to Roger's record but um, you know, it's uh, still far See. Djokovic may well have to beat 11-time French Open champion Rafa Nadal in Paris if he wants to hold all four Grand Slam titles simultaneously again. And, uh, of course, uh, he once did this uh, a while back and uh, he's done it before. It'll be the second time he's actually held all four uh, simultaneously. Uh, and I think uh, the last time he did that was in 2016 after he beat uh, Britain's Andy Murray uh, in the uh, French Open final. Uh, and he became the first man since Rod Laver uh, in 1969 to hold all four majors at once. And you've got to start off, Barry, by congratulating uh, Nole Djokovic on playing what is arguably his best ever game in this final. The game of his life. And and in truth, uh, look, uh, and it's no slight on uh, on Novak Djokovic, but I think that's what it was going to take to beat Rafael Nadal. Rafael Nadal, who hadn't dropped a set going into this final in the Australian Open. So while the, the, the eventual result looks very lopsided and, and uh, like he was dominated, but he had to play the tennis of his life to beat a very informed Rafael Nadal. Yeah, and you've got to say, that actually ultimately worked against Nadal, didn't it, Chris? The fact that... Uh, he came into this tournament cold. He didn't Absolutely. have any warm-up tournaments, any warm-up matches. He just came into the tournament cold. And then at the tournament, he sort of like steamrolled his way to the final. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. So now when he gets to Djokovic, it was incredibly difficult to then somehow find the level of form that he was at to match up to that when previously you've been playing against minnows, basically, mm. to get to the final. So I think it really did work against him. And hopefully for the next one, he's going to have a much better run-up to the final. And just mm. to give you an example of how good Nole was, it was the Serbs' biggest 
margin of victory in a Grand Slam final. We go. said he's won 15, but in those 15, he's never been this dom- dominant before. He made only nine unforced mm. errors against Nadal, taking his tally to just 23 in his final three matches, a total which was fewer than the number he had made in each of his opening four matches. So he got better yep. and better and better as the tournament went on. He absolutely needed it too. On the women's side of the draw, Japan's Naomi Osaka Naomi. <laughs> Naomi. <laughs> says she was in a state of shock after holding her nerve to battle past Petra Kivitova to win the Australian Open in a three-set thriller that also delivered her the world number one ranking. The fourth seed and US Open champion triumphed 7-6, 5-7, 6-4 in a two-hour and 27-minute epic over the Czech eighth seed uh, to claim back-to-back Grand Slams and become the first Asian male or female to hold the top spot. A rattle the Osaka almost blew her title hopes with one hand on the trophy when she failed to convert three championship points, leading 5-3 in the second set. Uh, the Never Say Die Kivitova forced a deciding set before Osaka finally edged ahead with a decisive break early in the third. Let's hear from the 2019 Australian Open Women's Singles Champion. Like I just felt like I didn't want to have any regrets. I, I think that if I didn't regroup after the second set, then um, I would have looked back on this match and probably cried or something so I don't know like I still feel very shocked like I I I don't like I felt like the match wasn't completely done but it was done you know Um, and it's one of those moments where you just you're fighting so hard and when it's finally over you just you're still in this state of like competitiveness see you know what? She's got that 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 whole sweet aura, the, yeah. the sweet innocence and whatnot. But in the third set, I believe we saw what we needed to see a whole lot more of: a ruthless streak, a shutting out of the emotions, and delivering a an almost robotic performance that delivered the title. I think she can learn from uh, Serena Williams. Uh, yeah. Serena Williams is the most affable, the f- friendliest person ever. A darling, uh, a darling to the yeah. crowd. Uh, she's a pleasure to interview. Mm. She's very sweet. Speaks very Mostly. well. <laughs> uh, and of course. Uh, she did reply my tweet, Barry. Remember? <laughs> <laughs> I have that on record. I have that on record. You know it. Yeah, I do. Uh, and I do, so uh, I can't say the same for you guys. She doesn't know you, see, fellas. But uh, anyway, uh, the point is, you know, you, you've got to have a game face. You do. Uh, and I yeah. think Naomi Osaka has got to learn to develop a game face, which is the 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 persona, the attitude, and uh, like that she like takes. An outer ego. Yeah, when exactly. In the that she takes, she it takes, it takes on takes the over. courts. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And and we see it with Luis Suarez. Yes. We see it with Cristiano Ronaldo, Ronaldo as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these are guys who are, who are supremely mm. competitive yeah. on the field of play, who do anything and everything that they need to be. Sometimes they even come across as arrogant, rude, mm. uh, boisterous, and, yeah. and, and, and so forth. But then once the full-time whistle goes, they're back being the normal yeah. person that they are. That's when we can appreciate the sweet, loving, charming, <laughs> yes. sweet girl who can cry at almost anything. Yeah, she doesn't have to be sweet in all. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 she, she doesn't have to be sweet. She needs to be that ruthless. Even that face, mm. the smile must fade away a little bit. <laughs> and, and look a little bit ugly. <laughs> yeah. Let, let me, yes, before you go on, yeah. I'll take you back to Tiger Woods' most dominant years. Yes, yes. What intimidated the rest of the other players was that Tiger Woods will get to the first tee, shake your hand, and between That's the it. first hole and the, and the 18th, 18th he never said a single exactly. word to you. Yeah. He exactly. never even looked your way, nothing. <laughs> he was just in game mode. Yeah. And players used to get intimidated yeah, They're by just, that. just looking at him. Yeah. You just feel intimidated because you can actually feel the concentration and the attention yeah. that is in him that he is focused and 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 chris it's a it's a, it's a cruel cruel world um and already osaka has experienced some of that cruel world that's what it's going to take for her to kick on i mean she's already shown that she's got the talent it's there bags in, of uh, it bags of it you can, you can see it and but i just feel that in that second set we saw a microcosm of potentially what we could see going forward where kivitova because of her ruthless streak was mm-hmm. able to overpower the nice sweet uh, osaka then when Osaka engaged game mode, game face, and decided, you know what? I'm in a game, yeah. I need to do the business. Game over. She yeah. delivered game over and was able to deliver a championship. That's what it's going to take, surely. Definitely. That second set, I think we saw her very shaky. We yeah. saw her very unsure of herself. Emotional. Emotional. Yeah. And I'm going to say this, though, in mm. defense of my girl, Naomi. Yeah. Okay. Naomi. 
It's there's a lot of pressure on women at the most elite um, areas level. of I'm, at, at any level, yeah. whether it's in corporate, whether it's in sport, oh. for you not to be emotional. Okay, it's seen how, how are they when other, it's a man, it's passion. How have the other it's ones done passion. it? Though? They have obviously. Mm. You look at uh, Serena Williams; she's extremely aggressive, and that's comparable but, to men. But let's let's go to Martina Hingis. Mm. She was 16 years old, world number one. Yep. She she had the unpopular task of dethroning Steffi Graf, who was an Loved idol. By all. Loved, Loved by, all. by everybody. Martina yes. Hingis would stand trying to serve and she would ha- have all of SW19 mm-hmm. booing her. Not a single tear. Never felt sorry for herself. Mm-hmm. She kicked on and she was able to dominate. Because you know what? She was it's, phenomenal. It's, 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 it's great for you to do that, to show the emotion. But you've got to show the composure. Yes. Because for me, I feel that could be the difference between Naomi Osaka, a great tennis player, yes. and Naomi Osaka, who can actually look at Serena Williams and say, you've won it 23 times. Mm. I'm coming after you. Yes. Mm. That's and the I difference. Think, I think Mental Osaka, fortitude. Osaka, yeah. Osaka has got that. We can all see it mm. in her. She has she got it. it. Okay, okay. She she but I it. think it's more to do with she needs to build up mental fortitude than yes. it does to do with she needs to be less mm. emotional. No, that's it. And that's exactly I what I think we're emotion is fine. Yeah. I think just for Can't be tears, No, no, no. When it's men, it's passion. No, but when no, it's no, women, no, it's their emotion. No, men don't, don't break down and cry? No. On and, the and, tennis court? And, and no, they, also, bat, they bash their tennis rackets. Yes, What's that? That's, that's, that's emotion. Okay. We don't mind that. Yes. It's, 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 it's just the crying? Oh, my goodness. It's emotion. It's emotion either way. For me, bashing your tennis racket on a tennis court is negative emotion. It's not negative emotion. How is it? It is. Because you know what? You're acting like a sports brat. The same way she was whinging in the second but, set is exactly is the same thing as bashing in this. sport Chris aggression okay is a if positive channel it it, 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 it's it, it, a it positive if it's you a can feeling channel sorry, it yeah. feeling sorry for yourself, for yourself is not. not a positive and, and in that second set she felt sorry for herself and as a result Kivitova got back into that but that's not actually she's exactly what we're talking about we want her to be that ruthless yes, to be aggressive so fine, 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 sorry for yourself. here's what I'm saying I'm fine for with her in being a, emotional she in, just needs to build up the mental in, fortitude in a post match she actually says it that I would have looked back at this match and I lost it and I would have probably cried you see that's not a negative emotion which you can channel how do you channel crying yeah how do, you, how do you no, channel? Yes, it's passion, it's passion right? but it's the wrong sort of passion for channel the sports into your game. But bashing you, your racket right. is okay. It's a, that's aggression. Yeah. That's aggression. And we need we need he more aggression. The we need more aggression, more aggression from, Osaka. from Osaka. From Osaka. That's what we actually we need love to see. and want to see. If, if Osaka can add that ruthless streak, yeah. she's going to dominate this game for years, years. to come. She's the years next to one. come. Okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, this is Benjamin Locke. I'm on the Zimbabwe Davis Cup team, and you're listening to ZFM Sport. Around the world in 60 seconds, international sports news. We take from the US where Justin Rose survived a nervy start in a late, char- a late charge from Adam Scott to earn a landmark victory at the Farmers Insurance Open in California. Rose 3 clear overnight opened the door for the chasing pack when he bogeyed three of his last five holes on the final day, but he was a model of composure and patience thereafter as a clutch six birdie at the 72nd hole capped a two-shot win. His 10th title in the US surpassed Sir Nick Faldo as the most successful Englishman on the PGA Tour and enhanced his status as the best golfer on the planet, extending his league over Brooks Kepka at the top of the world rankings. In South Africa, Pakistan captain Safraz Ahmed has been banned for four matches after admitting making a racist remark to South Africa all-rounder Andy Lepet Lukwayo. In the, the ICC, and Safraz breached its anti-racism code in a one-day international in Durban. The wicketkeeper will miss two one-day internationals and two T20 matches against South Africa. Meanwhile, a superb bowling performance from Pakistan's left-arm seamers inflicted the Proteus' first ever Pink Day defeat at the Wanderers' Yes yesterday to leave the series poised at 2-2 with a crushing eight-wicket victory. Touching down in New Zealand, Fiji whipped the United States 38-0 in a six-try route to take the United to take the New Zealand Sevens crown and draw level at the top of the World Series rankings. The winners walked away from Hamilton with back-to-back titles in both New Zealand and the World Circuit, once again depriving the US of a tournament win despite making the finals of all three dates in the 2018-19 series so far. Fiji and the US now lead overall standings with 57 Seven points, one ahead of hosts New Zealand, who beat South Africa 29-7 in the bronze medal match. Play of the day, Manic Monday. I think this decided itself. This week, we focus on Oliver. 
Mutuku Mutukuzi. And no doubt, uh, given that he passed away last week, you've heard most of his tracks. So this week, we'll just focus on his collaborations with various African and global artists. This one is with a Zambian, JK, Jordan Katumbule. And this one's called Zokera Tiza Kugara. Featured an artist of local fame, but as well as international renown, teaming up with JK, a Zambian contemporary artist, for this Afro pop banger. We are featuring Tuku this week, and undoubtedly, this is a popular uh, selection after Tuku passed away so sadly last week and was declared a national hero. And uh, Barry, were you a big fan of Tuku? Massive. 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 And, yeah, I loved her. Uh, in truth, uh, Tuku also. Uh, introduced me to working on musical projects as well because mm. I, I sold tickets at three of his gigs actually. You had a, a stint at Haifa, didn't you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At Haifa. As a ticket seller. Uh, I, t- I sold tickets at his Ringo and uh, Look at you now. HICC. Suit and tie. My man. <laughs> <laughs> I came up. <laughs> you came up. <laughs> All the way up. <laughs> Chris Tuku. Um, one of my youngest memories with my mom is actually going to a Tuku concert against wow. my father's will. How old will. were you? I was 10. You were 10? I was 10. Wow. wow. This must have been at the HICC. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Um, it was a whole lot of fun but also just my first ever live performance watching uh, anyone perform live was too probably where I saw it really amazing uh, I, I doubt it would have been a no time. my mum wouldn't let me go to that one it, it could have been with seven Myra. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, Bo- Bunch too. Uh, you know I, I always used to know him we used to love his music in the woods but my first encounter with him is actually memorable mm. because we went there with uh, my friend Jafet, Jafet Matanda mm. at uh, Bramfontein and uh, it was his show with Ringo that's that's when they, yeah that's when they introduced that song uh, into Miami mm. we didn't yes. even know the song you know, then he just came on stage, called Ringo, and Ringo came. We didn't even know he was there, and they built that tune. It was really nice. <laughs> Daily sports trivia question is brought to you by Profeeds. Profeeds, your feed and farm professionals. Well, just now we were tra- celebrating a national treasure, and now you could find a treasure if you are our daily winner because it's competition time. All you need to do every time we are on the show, simply send us a WhatsApp message with a hashtag Profeeds Trivia, and you might be the one lucky listener we call back. You'll field two questions, and if you get both correct, you will be our daily winner winner and in with a chance of winning our fabulous first prize of 2019 what is that a capri double door 290 liter fridge the first draw for this year will be on friday the 22nd of february the year is flying so we're getting there very quickly so you need to get in on the action uh, our quiz master today is chris <laughs> we have a special call on the line his name is alton hey alton 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 can you hear us Alton? Hello? Alton? Alton? No. Hello? Can you hear us? Oh, Alton. Alton. Oh, man. Are you breaking? I think the phone line's out in Guiru uh, a okay. bit dodgy today. Can you? Because I can hear you. Hello. There you there go. There oh, there we go. go. Hi, hey, Alton. Oh, oh. oh. It's a dodgy call. Oh, okay, no. we're going to try and get a hold of Elton uh, mm-hmm. a bit later on, of course, so we'll keep on trying. But uh, it's, it's been a, an exciting time, of course, uh, with all these questions. And um, can I do a quick one for you guys? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I'm not answering. Let's keep it age relevant. Let's keep it age relevant. No 1980 okay, questions. What years do you want? From what year? Okay. No 1980s questions. No, guys. Oh, wow. I, I didn't exist in 1980. Let me, let, me announce, let, me, let me announce to the listeners. ZFM Sport has got a quiz team and Mike is the captain of the quiz team and there's a reason why he's captain of the quiz team is because he has more general knowledge than all of us put together so ah, we're not answering really your question so he's not going to ask we're not you know, it's a question that he thinks is simple yes, exactly. <laughs> he's going to be murder okay give us a simple one give us a simple one a simple one give us the a simple simplest one. one an easy one uh, okay. what did you think is who won the, the who won the inaugural yeah. world cup donkey draw what world cup a rugby you see yeah. You see? Uh, who won the inaugural yes. rugby world cup? Guys, that's an easy it was one. New Zealand, wasn't it? Yes, New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand, yeah. Okay, and then in what year was the world cup? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Elton's back. <laughs> <laughs> nice save, Barry. Nice save. Pleasure. <laughs> hey, Elton. Okay. Can you hear us? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Hey, Elton. 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 Hey,
Yes, can hear you. Okay, that double door freezer was almost <laughs> gone for a second. <laughs> I have two questions for you, one local, one international. Your first question, which is local, how many majors did Zimbabwean golfer Nick Price win over his career? Was it three, four, or was it five? <laughs> Say it again for me. And I didn't hear you. Okay, how many majors did Zimbabwean golfer Nick Price win? Did he win three, four, or did he win five? Uh, Just three, four, or five? Let's take a guess, man. Just take yeah, a guess, Alton. Take a step, buddy. I think so. Oh, man. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry about that. Day. Yeah. Oh, well, there we go. Thanks Sorry. for trying, Alton. Thanks for playing, buddy. All right. The Daily Sports Trivia Question was brought to you by ProFeeds. ProFeeds, the performance feed. Alcohol may be hazardous to health if consumed to excess. The operation of machinery or driving after the consumption of alcohol is not advisable. Not for sale to persons under the age of 18 years. Castle Lager is more than just beer. It's pure liquid gold. Crafted from the finest local ingredients to deliver a taste that is somewhat dry, somewhat bitter, but never sweet. It's the taste that stood the test of time. It all comes together with a castle. The big leagues, the big teams, the big players. The beautiful game on ZFM Sport. Right, of course, uh, that was unfortunate for Alton out in Gueru there. We asked him a very simple question, I think, Chris. How many majors did Zimbabwean golfer Nick Price win over his career? And the answer is three. Yeah, three, three. Three, three majors. And, of course, uh, Nick Price, a very dominant uh, in world golf uh, back then, a world number one in 1994 and 1995. All the rivalry. Changing moments. Aguero! All the updates from the Premier League on ZFM Sport. This is the league we want to watch. Of course, kickoff is in England. The FA Cup. Mauricio Pochettino stubbornly insists winning a trophy is not the priority for Tottenham, but he is playing a risky game as he focuses on finishing in the top four in the Premier League. Spurs lost 2 0 at Crystal Palace in the FA Cup on Sunday, just three days after they fouled to Chelsea on penalties in the semi final of the League Cup. The Argentine manager, while disappointed about the two defeats, has doubled down on his long held contention that, he is, that it is more important for the team to qualify for the Champions League each season than to win silverware. Let's hear from Poch. But again, we are going to create a debate that is to win a trophy is going to help the club um, to, to be on the, um, in a, the last level. Um, and I'm not agree with that. Only it's going to, um, to build your ego because uh, win a trophy of course after you can say oh you win a trophy but on the reality Tottenham is the most important is big always in the being consistent on the top four and playing Champions League that is the realistic thing for Tottenham and that is going to help the club to achieve the last the last level the club is doing fantastic. Being, I think it's, it's, it's so successful because in the last four or five years we are fighting there with a big size in different way, um, and of course helping the club to achieve all the club uh, need to be a, a club in the level that today we are talking about Chelsea, United, City, or Arsenal, or, or Liverpool, of course. See. 
Mauricio Pochettino, the manager of Tottenham Hotspur there. And of course, uh, uh, we've had a discussion actually earlier with, with, uh, with a number of uh, sports followers and uh, followers of the English Premier League and uh, uh, found out their thoughts and their, their varying uh, views on the Alois as to what really defines success for a team uh, and whether what Pochettino is saying is actually correct or not. Uh, what is your view on this in terms of the domestic trophies? Let's let's take away the championship, which is winning the league, uh, and let's take away the Champions League. And let's centre our discussion on the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup, which are generally recognised as the domestic trophies. What would be more important in your estimation for Tottenham to do? Win an FA Cup or Carabao Cup or to keep their place in the Champions League if you had a choice of either or? Yeah, if I had a choice, I would go for the Champions League, uh, obviously. But, uh, Mike, uh, winning games doesn't change anything. You can't say, good, ah, we can't win the champ. You can win both. You play the game. They lost in a game that they could have won, but they still played the 90 minutes. So, in terms of playing, what difference would it have made if they had won that means that they lost? Well, no, you, 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 was, you was responding to a question around that. The fact is, it looks like you're going through another trophy this season. And you were saying, in our context as Tottenham, mm. it's, it's really neither here nor there because mm. our ultimate objective is to remain consistently in the Champions League. So, yeah. in the Champions League places, as opposed to winning the FA Cup. Yeah, I do. I do. I really do understand that. But uh, every club, they, you need their trophies. If it's a cap on his uh, on, on his head if he wins the FA Cup and then qualify for the Champions League as well. But when you look, go out of the champ- of the FA Cup and then say ah, it's not our priority, I tend to take that with a, with a, with a pinch of salt. I, I, I it's me. I want to win everything. Mm. I want a club. Man City. They are going for all four trophies. I would be happy for them to actually go all out and win all the four trophies. Mm. Now then, when they lose all three, I know our chance. Incidentally, our Pep, Pep has come out and clarified that and said, "No, we're not going for all tro- four trophies." No, I would be happy. Mm. I would be happy if they win all four. Mm-hmm. But it, for 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 them now to say, "Ah, no, don't worry. Our priority is this." When you have you have lost. I mean, I, I take I take that with a pinch of salt. You should have you should have just gone. I actually think Tottenham space Tottenham more space a season. He has collapsed. Mm, but if you but, ask but, me, but, they, 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 they have collapsed. They I, might not I even make the top four. I understand where you're coming from, but we're talking about in the context of their club objectives. Yeah, they I, want I, they I, want I, the Champions okay, League. Okay, let me let me ask you this and say. Barry, have you seen growth at Tottenham in the last six seasons? Absolutely. And and, and here's the thing. I think it's it's important uh, but, to... But, uh, wait, before you carry on, okay. how has that growth been achieved without Silverway? Through shrewd management and ensuring that the they're, they're balancing the books and bringing in young, fantastic talent. The young, fantastic no, talent... I mean the growth of the brand, of the football club, Champions the stature League. of the club. The Champions League. Yeah, getting, Champions getting, League. Uh, finish, so finishing then doesn't higher, he have a point the, the when, when he says, guys, I, 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 they, it's great to win... And he didn't dismiss the FA Cup. Mm. He just said, he, in terms of choosing between a domestic trophy and the Champions League... Okay, and I think that's what we need to clarify. Yeah, he's I not, also chose he's Champions not, League, remember? He, he's not saying, I didn't want to win the FA Cup. He's saying, if... I had to choose. <clears throat> it's the Champions League. That's that's a priority. And yes. I, would, I would like oh, to. We, are, we agree on that one. I would, I would like to throw in that the, the the discussion becomes problem problematic when we don't contextualize Tottenham Hotspur, because mm. Tottenham Hotspur has is is uh, a newbie in the in the top six debate. Let, mm. let, to be fair, and it's largely as a result of the great manager, shrewd management of Maurizio Pochettino, and doing that. Getting into regularly becoming a fixture in the Champions League in itself is success for Tottenham Hotspur. And that's not to say that that's no slight on them. It's, 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 not, it's not denigrating them. But it, as a club, that is what they're focused on. Yes, other clubs have other uh, priorities and w- w- they need to, there needs to be some silverware. Uh, uh, the fans want to see silverware. For instance, at Manchester United, they would love to see some silverware every single season, season in season, no matter what trophy it is. We saw it when Jose Mourinho arrived. But that's a different club in a different set of circumstances. Mm -hmm. It's important to assign the circumstances that apply to Tottenham Hotspur to Tottenham Hotspur. Chris? 
I'm going to be really basic and say silverware is nice. Everyone mm. wants silverware. Mm. At yeah. some stage, Tottenham fans are going to be screaming for that silverware. At some stage, So yes. for me to say oh, Champions League is more important, granted, but I think the silverware is still nice. Yeah, but the, I agree. That, that, you that's know, that's from the fans' fans perspective, guys. Yeah. Let, let's be real. And, and, I, I and, I, and I think increasingly, though, you're also getting fans who understand where clubs are. Yes, because I'll yes. tell you that uh, there, there are fans who fully understand where Tottenham lies. And yes. I think Barry said it very well that, mm. you know what, the ambitions at Manchester United, at Manchester City, cannot be compared with the ambitions at Everton. Yes. And uh, uh, there are teams who start the season knowing that we are not going to win silverware. Correct. We are going to enter every competition and we are playing if we happen to get to the final and we happen to do something that's Wicked. great. But we are not going to, we are not winning silverware. Yeah. Teams like Wolves don't have ambitions <laughs> to win silverware. <laughs> Their ambition is to stay in the, in league. the league. In the league, yeah. And stay there. So I think there's a handful of clubs and that's the problem where, where I think teams like Bayern Munich, silverware is it expected. It's important. Real Madrid Madrid, silverware. Important. Barcelona, silverware. Juventus, silverware is naturally expected because of the stature of the club. But then there are certain clubs, like at Napoli. Yeah. Maurizio Sarri had the opportunity to be at, 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 at Napoli, build, work, do his things without the pressure of winning silverware None. because it's the stature of the club. I was but told he did however, a great job. However, for the fans though, like Chris said, it's nice when the team wins something Some, because yeah. the fans... Something tangible. Yeah, the fans don't sit in the boardroom. No, they don't. Yeah. And you see, Mike, mm. it's, it's good to be in that Champions League uh, Champions League place, but they have been there third time now. Mm. And, and you get used to it that we are there. We are now one of the big... One of the bigger, one of the You're big teams as a fan, yeah? yes, 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 as yeah, a fan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we are one of the the bigger fixtures mm. in there. Mm. And then what next? What's the what's the next? Step? Stay they've there. Been, they've, they've been there. They've are won they, trophies are they, before. Are they already the, at the their club, place? The club though, has won the trophy. They've won trophies before. They've won. They 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 were there some time back with Gascoigne, yeah, uh, Chris Waddle, and them. They have been uh, but, they've but, been winning these things. But, but they've had so, to rebuild to but, get to where they are now. Okay, so when does we are not discounting the importance of Champions? League places, Chris, but which, which they corner? need the yes. silverware. Where, where do you then make the distinction and say, okay, it's um, we've actually cemented ourselves in the Champions League, now we're a regular fixture, now we're going to focus on the silverware. Where does that transition happen? That, that transition may never come, because okay. you know what, I think a fan sometimes, we are caught up in the sporting project and we don't realize that these teams have evolved to be more than sporting projects. Yeah. These teams are now businesses. Let, let's be uh, fair. If you go back 15 years ago, Manchester United w- was owned by people who prioritized the sporting project ahead of the business mm. and who understood that, you know what, with success on the, on, on the field, we can make money off the field of play. Now they have owners who are saying, you know what, it's a business. Money, 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 as long money. as we are making money, as long as we are considered to be one of the wealthiest clubs in the world, it's great. Cool. If we win a trophy once in a while, that's fine. That's why Manchester United uh, hasn't been really aggressive even now in changing their manager. Mm. It's unheard of that a club of Manchester United stature can fly, f- uh, fire a manager and they say we're going to have uh, an a interim. manager, an interim manager until the end of the season. Mm. What happened to a club that has got the stature to go and say to, to Tottenham, listen, we want Pochettino now. How much do you want for him? 50 million? Here's 50 million because they're capable of doing that. But it just shows you that the business side of things now are taking That's control to a point yeah. where the, the owners of these clubs, to be honest, are are saying we'd rather make the money. How do you make the money in Tottenham's uh, case by staying in the Champions League mm. and also Simple. winning the FA Cup? <laughs> How much money? No, How much you, money? You, you, boost. No, no, it's, it's, boost it's, it's trivial. For the brand. It's, it's trivial. It's, no, it's, 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 it's very trivial. Yeah. To a club like Tottenham, to a club it like is, Tottenham, it, it is trivial. absolutely trivial. It, they would rather focus on making sure that they get finish in that. No, winning the FA Cup does not mean you are not going to. Get but into but the, we've clarified the that. That's why we say the discussion is a choice between this or that alloys. We are agreed that mm. the preferable situation is to win both. Yeah, win but, everything. Yeah, win, win everything. Four. Yes, but we're saying if if the choice is this or that, which way then do you lean? Mm. And winning the the, the, the the FA Cup, guys, the money the money is involved around it's the FA great, Cup no. are not great. Yeah. It's, it's really a, a trophy for pride and prestige, which is great for the fans. Yeah. Yes, but the Champions, yeah, it's, but it's the it's Champions the League yeah, comes... Planning for the club is huge do, as well. Do, it the, it's do, you know, oh, do you know, listen, Liverpool won the FA Cup. Do you know what happened uh, the next season after that? After they failed to cha- qualify for the Champions League? Adidas pulled out mm. of Liverpool. I didn't say if you no, win no, no, the World no. Cup, I'm you're ju- not going to qualify I'm just for trying to give you a comparison of the value. I know the value from the brand I value. Have already yes, said about the so value. so that's why Daniel Levy can look at the FA Cup and say, you know what? And laugh it off. We can laugh that off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go for the and, Champions and, League. And understand no. also, 
Mauricio That's Pochettino. What he's doing. You no, that's what he's doing. I am saying that it da- winning the FA Cup does not mean you are discounting the Champions League. But if you win both, it's a boost. We so agreed. We agreed, agreed with that a long time but ago. But when you, you keep when on arguing by when, yourself. When you, get, when you get to a place where it's either or, you would prefer the Champions League on the basis that the big money is there. And Daniel Levy knows it. Knows it for the club as well. My goodness. Time, time, time flies, up. eh? But there's been breaking news concerning uh, the uh, tickets uh, for the next Warriors encounter. Uh, there has indeed. and uh, oh, Shocking. Shocking because the uh, rest of the ground, uh, get this, is going to be 10 bucks. Uh, the bays uh, <laughs> either side of the VIP are going to be 50 bucks. And uh, for you to sit in the blue seats in the VIP, you'll have to shell out $200. Is That's this match um, televised? Just curious. Uh, it, yes, it's, it's, it's going to be t- uh, televised. Yeah, just so, thought I'd ask. So, so we're going <laughs> to be discussing this on tomorrow's show. No doubt, of course, there are going to be a lot of opinions on this because oh, it so seems cool. such a ridiculous price increase in the light of uh, what's happening right now. And for them to almost double, treble, and at times, quadruple uh, the cost of accessing the National Sports Stadium. It's going to be interesting to hear what the justifications are and we'll be discussing that on tomorrow's edition of ZFM Sport. Do catch myself and the team Alois Bunjira, Chris Gray, Barry Manandi, Sean Tafirinika, Mark Pozzo. We'll be back here tomorrow, 5 past 6. May God richly bless you. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Hey. Be sure to catch ZFM Sport every weekday on ZFM Stereo. My station, your station.